just the other day, the O Block Six were found guilty in the murder of FBG Duck. This was a Fed case. And the six members are C. Murda, age 32, Kenny Mack, age 30, Los, 32, C. Thang, 24, Muwap, 24, and TZ, 34. You got to understand that they've been sitting in jail for like two years now. Yeah. So some of these guys that were arrested are like 22 years old, like barely able to drink. And now they're all facing mandatory life sentences. What is your take about this whole case? I mean, Chicago is one of the rawest examples of, I guess, modern day gangsters. Like that was an assassination in one of the most high end areas in Chicago, broad day, and he got hit, what, 20 something times? Um, they said it was a hundred thousand dollar hit. This is something that might be read about a hundred years from now. You know what I mean? This sounds like a, a fucking Al Capone hit, and it it just it is what it is. You know, I don't think the youth understand the meaning of a federal life sentence. I don't think they understand what type of life that is. And the chances of coming home are so slim. And the thing is, the, the, the gangster life that you're living, it doesn't end when you get locked up. When they get sentenced and they end up at them USPs, it doesn't stop. You still got to be gangster. And in the feds, you get caught with a knife, they give you more time. They give you additional years. So now you got life plus seven for a knife. You stab somebody, life plus 15 for the stabbing. They die. Now you're at ADX. Now you're in a cell with no window. You read your mail on the screen. The shower comes to your door. No human contact. Like, it gets bad. And I don't think people look at it like that. I think people, I think in this day and age, people look at it like a fucking sports team. You got the fans of Vaughn. You got the fans of Duck. People are talking about the score and we're talking about dead people. How many have been killed on this side? How many have been killed on that side? It's a game to a lot of people. This right here, this case is the end of a chapter in what is Drew. The feud between two of Chicago's biggest rappers is over. Dirk and Vaughn and they're both gone. Two major losses on both sides and a huge loss for the culture itself. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine being a 24-year-old being told that the rest of my life is going to be in a jail cell with men and knives and <laughs> rapes and, and violence and you know, gangs and so forth. It, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me at all. And when they say mandatory life, what exactly does mandatory life mean? That means that you have to do your life sentence or is there still some wiggle room to get out early? Uh, mandatory life means you have to die. You got to die. You might not, I don't even, federally, they might not even let you off the fucking property. You might get buried in a federal graveyard. Because that's how they do it in some states. You got state wait, graveyards. Wait, 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 wait. They will bury you in the prison. Yeah. <laughs> Is what you're saying? Yeah. They have prison graveyards where they don't have names on the slabs or nothing. You just get buried. So your family can't even visit your gravesite. Not as far as... I mean, bro, a lot of people... You got to understand. You get a federal life sentence, what family is visiting you? Does every one of them have kids? Some of them might not even have kids. Their bloodline just ended with that life sentence. Yeah. There's nothing for you. I personally met people in prison whose whole goal was to get a CO pregnant, 
or a nurse pregnant because they understood when they die, their bloodline ends. And they just wanted to feel that they would continue on this earth. They don't know what comes after. They just wanted to leave something behind. And that's something that they struggled with while inside of prison. There's kids in prison that ended up catching a body at 15, 16, and they're virgins. They've never had sex. And they go to prison. And they got 20, 25 years, 30 years. I mean, when you got time like that, it's common for those kids to not care. Do something inside of prison that causes them to get more time and they never go home. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a disaster. And uh, the fact that it was done in broad daylight in front of the designer stores in Chicago, it was basically the Rodeo Drive of Chicago. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in the beginning, nobody was caught and everything else like that. But it, you know, law moves very slowly. Everyone has to, you know, the feds have to line up all their ducks and everything else like that. But in such a public place with all these witnesses, with triangulation of cell phones, with cameras everywhere. Okay, so you take the license plate off your car. They're going to follow that car to wherever it started. There's going to be cameras at some point of you driving that car somewhere. And they're going to connect the dots. And then in this case, they start pulling everyone's phone records. And they started to see the text messages of how the whole thing was set up. And yeah, okay, as a 22-year-old, $100,000 might seem like a lot of money at that time. What are you going to do with that when you're doing life? Well, that's also, how many people was it? Six of them? So that's 100 k Six to six people. That's yeah. 100 k split, split six, six ways. ways. Yeah. And, like 15K, 16K a, a person. It's it's a mess, bro. It's a mess. It's unfortunate that it played out how it played out. But at the same time, people like Drew. And people like, people can deny it all they want and act like it isn't a part of it. Murder and drill go hand in hand. That's what it's talking about. This is the reality of it. A lot of people just don't envision that. Everybody thinks that they're going to be the dirk that makes it out. You know what I'm saying? And they don't envision the 20, 30 dead homies along the way. They don't envision themselves getting hit multiple times and bleeding out in the street while the cops are just looking at you. 